uh, conference update? Oh, yeah. Um, Any WWA? <laughs> yeah, actually, the reason why I went to the conference was because one of the things on their agenda was about the PFAS and dealing with it in New England. And I thought it would be good to maybe go get some additional information on it so that people can realize that we're not the only ones and that this stuff is everywhere. And that Aquarian was there as well. Actually, Kyle McMoran actually gave a presentation. Oh, my God. And he actually won an award on um, an article he had written in 2017. He was presented by one of the former uh, New England Water Works presidents. Wow. So, you know, it, it gave me comfort to uh, know that it seems like we got a great company that's uh, trying to keep the water safe for us. And I know that a lot of people would like it to happen a little bit faster than it's happening, but I think at least New England seems to be working on it. And uh, there was a couple things I wanted to just say to the board about some things I heard that I thought were very interesting, that New England Water is working on communicating all this a little bit more to the public, to the everyday public. Oh. Because I think the public does take things for granted, clean water, waste and so uh, wastewater and drinkable water. And uh, I'm hoping to, I became a member of the New England Water Works Conference just to make, get their information from them. So I'm hoping that when they start with whether they're going to do social media, I think they're going to be having a chronicle debut coming up that we can, uh, it will be something that I can follow. And I know that Representative Bean and Mesmer are heavily following it on the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission, which I'm hoping to go to that meeting on the 10th. And I wanted to relay some of this information to them, so I wanted to share it with the board first. I've been trying to get Aquarian with the help of the town manager and the town council to look more at increasing block rate structure for charging customers, which is actually the preferred rate uh, for a lot of people that were presenting at New England Waterworks. And what that is, it starts out, you get charged a um, unit price, which is what the cost for the water is. And then depending on use, you get charged more. And it's done in a way so that if you're a high conservationist, you're gonna get charged less. But then obviously if you have a business that might use more water or you have more mm -hmm. kids in your home, things like that, it's all these different tiers. Yeah. And it's set up and I actually understand it now. So I'm hoping that <laughs> Carl was at the meeting with me that maybe at our next Aquarian meeting we could get down. <laughs> and now that I know a little bit more about this, I mean, I think that New England Water Works is saying that it should be done. So I think that it's something we need to fight with to get the water company to do. And as far as PFAS contamination, I just want to touch on that a little bit. I found out a little bit more about the Vermont, how they came up with their number and why it's so low, is because they actually took children from the ages of zero to 12 months into consideration, which I know Representative Mesmer has been pushing uh -huh. for New Hampshire to do. Huh. So hopefully like all this gathering of information, and I know we received an email from Representative Bean on as far as some of the recommendations the commission's gonna be making mm -hmm. at their next meeting. Yeah. I think we need to stay on top of it. Uh, we need to get as much information as we can. The Interstate Technology Research Committee has developed a PFAS team and there's a website to that, which I can maybe share some of this information and get it to Christy for the website. If anyone is interested in getting more information on PFAS and how it has directly, directly affected all of New England, not just uh, Seacoast, New Hampshire, I would highly recommend going on and taking a look. It's a little bit more comforting, almost the same way that the chief was talking about the Legionella, once mm -hmm. you get more information about it, more everyday information, things that have actually happened with it, what's been done to prevent or treat it, they're working on it. And also, another thing about it is the way to treat it, because I know we're trying to get Aquarian to treat the wells, the granulated activated carbon is the go-to right now, but there is a lot more development on that. Mm -hmm. So before we spend millions of dollars, we want to make sure that it's something that's going to be long-term so that we don't have to, you know, change it quick again when the technology changes over. Hmm. So if anyone's in any interested, I have a lot of notes on this, and uh, maybe I can put something together formally, but I just wanted to fill the board in on that. So 
So if anyone has any questions about it, or I want to thank you for going. You, you've, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. you've given our board a little bit more depth to what right. we need to know. Well, I mean, I was, you know, it's it's something you're interested it's in. It's like anyway, just so getting more, just more information on it. Absolutely. You know, outside of what we're dealing with specifically right here, to know other people are going through a lot of similar cases of the same thing. So absolutely. Yeah. We, yeah, um, Regina, where you had the list of um, what was going to be brought up at the meeting, and I turned my list into you with a couple of you know check marks and comments and stuff. Do you think that the people who were at that conference pretty much agreed with the uh, stated goals? Oh, you're talking about, you're actually talking about the other conference I went to, which right. is the oh, New okay. Hampshire Municipal Association. Oh, okay. So when we yeah. finish I get, up with the, I yeah, the water one. I will, right. I will, I do with, do well, you with cast this. out all this stuff. I know, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. Any, any other questions on the, on the water issue? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, we had a copy of that uh, presentation that Carl did in Waterworks magazine You gave me the something. journal, yeah, actually. Yeah, Carl, uh, you know, because I have a friend that has a water company, and it's uh, he's very well respected so that's nice and he seems to do a good job that read very well uh, the article that he wrote and what I wanted to ask is what you were talking about charging for the water is that mean does that mean that the more water that you use uh, you know like the way it works with electricity if you have a business the more electricity that you use then you pay more right but they would set you up like they actually the town of Sharon was there and I think they have their own municipal water in mm -hmm. Sharon Mass so the director mm -hmm. of the public works was there whoever it was and he, they have I think four or five different tiers for Sharon so you have your base rate which is always the same for everyone it's mm -hmm. like thirty-two dollars whatever it was and then from there it's like they grouped a lot like elderly or like a single or mm -hmm. you know a couple in a house yeah. like they would be in the lower <laughs> tier because they probably conserve a lot they don't use too much water mm -hmm. and then the next level would be probably like a more like four person family mm -hmm. home with kids that are like yeah. you know you get two or three showers happening every day mm -hmm. that's like the second tier and then the third tier which is when you're a little bit over that and then the fourth tier is your maximum level but really what you have to determine is what the minimum is and what the maximum is, and then you can sort of figure out everything else in between. But yeah, so I mean, if you're like a laundromat, well, this was strictly for residential, but I don't see why in theory you couldn't do the same type of thing for a non-residential yeah. business. You can. You know, so it would be, you have like, the minimum would be zero to 4,000 gallons, uh, what would that be, a day, or, I'm not really quite sure, but 4,000. Yeah, billing period. Then you're in that, and then if you're level. like four thousand yeah. to six thousand, you're in the second tier. Yeah, and then it keeps yeah. moving up. So it's you're getting charged for more of what you use. Mm -hmm. and if you can serve more, theoretically, you should get charged less. Yeah. We have, we have been getting good PFOA reports from John Hurley of Aquarian. Mm -hmm. I think Aquarian's done a really good job yeah. in stepping up with the public communication. Now you can talk about the 